Well, some people are willing to wait 30 tables before their turn. That's one testament to the business model and food of Grandma's home. Let's take a look now at the cogs that make Grandma's kitchen turn. Lunchtime at another branch restaurant of Grandma's home in Beijing's Third East Ring Road. Three office ladies come for a little gathering. The three ladies' orders follow an exact operation procedure. As the waiter entered their orders into the system, dishes under different categories automatically went to corresponding departments in the kitchen, such as steam, roast, hot, cold, brew and beverages. Not only cooking becomes standardized, but even where for kitchen staff to put their towels and mugs. This has become a habit. Everything needs to be put back to where they were after use. Order arrivals have to be used first, so new employees know exactly where to find things because everything is labeled clearly. Zhou Fang leads a 12-member team whose job is to create hundreds of very specific standards and making sure every staff member across 85 stores follows the rules in exactly the same way. For many people, food safety is a very broad idea. They know the term but don't know what exactly constitutes food safety. This is not only an issue for the general public but also for many of our employees. So we need to translate safety practices into standards and let our staff know. I will give you the smallest example, how to wash your hands. We've created a six-step practice that specifies how you should rub your hands from back to front and how you should do it for 20 seconds. If we only tell our employees you should wash your hands and sanitize, this would be an empty order. So by creating standards, we turn an abstract idea into specific practices. But standard products, services and operation procedures do more than just improving quality and reducing risks. They maximize profit. Few Chinese restaurants fix their tables on the floor, and I was one of the first to do so. People used to move tables around. When there were more customers than enough tables, the owner put several small tables together, right? But this was actually beyond the owner's production capacity, because you only had a certain space and labor. If you try to increase production, the quality of your product would be definitely affected. We should live within our means. If I set 100 seats in my restaurant, I'm only meeting the standard of serving 100 customers. It's like a machine. Its turnover rate is just like my table turnovers. They are the same. To make standard operation procedures profitable, a reliable supply chain is essential. Compared to factories, restaurants purchase smaller amounts of material and their suppliers are usually small and scattered. This therefore increases risks in the supply chain. Grandma's Home says 70% of material, like fresh vegetables, comes from local suppliers. The rest of 30% comes from its own logistics center established in Hangzhou in 2011. This dispatching center is responsible for sending material twice a week to different cities. Such material like ingredient packages or specially seasoned meat is either difficult to acquire locally or produced cheaper in Hangzhou. Take Ya Hulu, a well-known Hangzhou cuisine as an example. It requires the chef to take out the entire skeleton of a duck and stuff it with sticky rice and beans. It would take a trained chef an entire day to process 10 ducks only. What's more, few chefs outside the southeastern part of the country know how to do it. 
but Grandma's home has outsourced the job to a meat factory in Hangzhou, which can process 200 ducks per person per day. The logistics center then stuffs, packages, and sends the ducks to different cities. All Beijing needs to do is to heat the package, cut the string, and fry the duck. This production process brings down the cost of the dish by nearly 50 percent. And customers get a low price of 58 yuan, that's about $10. While rent at one footing street takes away 8% of the branch's revenue, every square inch on the high street needs to be put in use to maximize profit. Wang Yang says having the refrigeration house located in the city's 6th Ring Road to store material coming from Hangzhou makes more economic sense. The temperature here is usually between 18 and 19 degrees, minus. Do you see my breath? I was also holding my hands. Since I'm only wearing a shirt inside, I can definitely feel it's a little chilly here. You see, all these boxes of food will run out in 10 days if we are busy, or 15 days the longest. All this. The delivery of these goods has also been outsourced to a professional logistics company, which delivers goods for supermarkets and food companies. Standard operation procedure, logistics center, and outsourcing, Grandma's home is more like a factory than a restaurant. A big part of the reason, Wu Guoping himself had worked at a pharmaceutical factory for 19 years before opening Grandma's home. When we first opened the restaurant, I said to my chief chef, why there's so much water on the kitchen floor? He said, boss, we chefs have a saying, you don't check the backstage when you watch a play, so you don't go to the kitchen when you eat your dinner. I'm sure your home kitchen wouldn't be any cleaner than here. In fact, I had seen clean places. In the factory I used to work, we had to take shower and change clothes each time we enter a particular workshop. I had seen this, so these factory experiences have given me a certain scope to look at the catering business. So, Professor, with the sheer number of people that eats at Grandma's home and sometimes the complexity, of Chinese cuisine versus, say, certain Western dishes, efficiency, I would have to assume, has to be one of the top priorities for the restaurant. Uh, talk to us about the importance of standard operating procedures at Grandma's Home. Sure. So standard operating procedure, or SOP, is essentially a formal management and control tools, and it plays a very important role for large organizations. So there are several key advantages to using a SOP. So one is it helps a company to uh, reduce uh, unnecessary waste and you know streamline its business operations. And second advantage of SOP is that um, it basically uh, promote consistency and same quality standards across you know different business functions within the firm mm. as well as across employees within the organization. So Professor Jia, walk us through the steps in terms of actually implementing the standard operating procedure that you've been talking about. Sure. Um, so let's take the back kitchen of Grandma's home as an example. So it's essentially like a streamline. There are four major action steps involved. So step one is for uh, the back kitchen to receive order from the floor and start to assemble you know, all the required ingredients. And the second step is for uh, the chef to take over and actually cook the dish. Mm. And the third step would be a QC quality check on the dish and make sure nothing's wrong with it. And the very last step is to ship the dish out to uh, the floor again. It allows you to uh, reduce you know, the production time in the back kitchen so you can get the dish onto the customer's table as soon as you can. And you know, by doing that, you're effectively reducing the overall dining time of, you know, for each table, which will effectively increase the table turnover rate, hmm. right? increase profitability. Absolutely. You know? I want to zoom in on uh, Grandma's Home Supply Chain, Professor, because uh, for a restaurant yeah. like Grandma's Home, right. I feel its sheer size and scale, again, the supply chain can essentially make or break uh, this restaurant. It has its own distribution center in Hangzhou like we just heard, but mm -hmm. in terms of delivery of its food and its products, that a lot of that actually is uh, outsourced to a third party. Do you yeah. think that Grandma's Home's current supply chain is best serving its business model? You know, Michael, I actually think Grandma's Home is doing a very good job with the, with the supply chain man uh, management. You know, restaurants in China, they typically procure a small amount of raw materials, but at relatively high 
level of frequency, mm -hmm. which makes the entire supply chain management very complicated and very demanding. Right? So I think what Grandma's Home is doing is focusing its resources and attention on key business functions and while outsourcing you know, all the supporting and auxiliary functions onto third parties, such as delivery, as you just mentioned. Mm. I think this is actually a smart move. But you know, the potential downside risk to that is now the company will have to think about how to manage you know, this multiple uh, relationships with vendors and you know, how to create proper synergies among all these different vendors. Right. And this is not always easy to achieve. We talked about business model, we talked about strategy as well, but the strategy is not going to work unless we actually execute that strategy, right? And that's what we've been talking about. Next, Professor, we're going to talk about the future of this restaurant chain and how potentially it can expand.